What's going on guys and welcome to today's video bringing back some content after the Raptors first summer league game where they took down the New York Knicks. We're going to be talking about the two players who played really well. You've already probably seen it on my Instagram, but we're going to dive into a little bit of their gameplay, how Malachi Flynn and Scotty Barnes played and maybe touch on a few of the other players, but probably not for this episode, just to keep it short. And honestly, there wasn't a whole lot out there in terms of other guys that I think uh, showcased anything super significant. I think there are a few moments for some of the younger guys, but we're going to keep that part out of this episode. We're just going to talk about Scotty Barnes and Malachi Flynn. Most of the attention is going to go on Scotty Barnes because, as you know, Raptors' fourth overall pick, there was a lot of pressure, especially after the Raptors went a little unorthodox going with Scotty Barnes at the fourth pick. But after watching him today, I'm super excited to talk about his performance because he played an outstanding game but before we get into it if this is your first time checking out my page make sure to subscribe if you haven't already we do raptors breakdown analysis and we're planning on bringing a lot of content to you guys throughout the regular season so make sure to subscribe so you get all the updates you can watch all of our videos see all of our video content as well so let's get right into it guys let's go Scotty Barnes was showcasing the full package today, and there's no question about his ability as a player, right? He's huge, 6'9", honestly looks even bigger than that today. He was an absolute monster when you looked at him on the court, and offensively, he can do it at all three levels. He has that type of potential. As a scorer from three-point land, even though he doesn't have a great shooting percentage, he shot one for four today, he has good mechanics, and he's got potential at that end of the floor. But he can do it from the mid-range. We saw him hit a mid-range jumper. We saw him hit a floater. And then he can also do it, obviously, at the rim as a big athletic player. He can do it at the rim. Actually, it seems very under the basket when he plays at the rim. He doesn't quite have that Giannis type of leap off one leg. He's more of like the type of player that plays under the rim. But he has better touch and fluidity than Giannis did when he came into the league. And I've been seeing some comparisons between the two of these guys. And Scotty Barnes today really did showcase a lot of that defensive side of the ball, right? The versatility, the length, his arms, 7-2 wingspan. He is humongous. He can reach any ball. He's quick, and he's super athletic, the ability to steal the ball. He had two steals today, uh, 18 points, 10 rebounds, and five assists too. He was showcasing that playmaking part of his game, right? He was passing when, teams would, when the team would double him, passing out of the pick and roll. He was just showing a lot of versatility with the ball in his hands and honestly an increased and tightened handle too from his time in college so I think he's got the full showcase of the ability like I said three levels of scoring he did have an inefficient game he did shoot 7 of 18 from the field 1 of 4 from 3 so it is still a work in progress with him as a scorer because that's part of his game that I think over time will get better similar to a guy like Giannis who came in not necessarily averaging 25 a game, but was more of a defensive guy, lengthy, and a bit of a project player. And I think with Barnes this season, I don't think we're going to see him become a superstar in front of our eyes right away. But he's the type of player that in two, three, four years, he could end up significantly surpassing Jalen Suggs or those types of players because of his high ceiling as a two-way player, especially on the offensive side of the ball, a place where he's going to need some more work. He was showing a lot. And like I said, the playmaking was huge. The rebounding was big, 10 boards. He's obviously a big guy. Uh, but I do think there is going to be an issue of playing him with Pascal Siakam. Unless you go small ball with Barnes at the five, I feel like the fit between these two is going to be interesting. My expectation is Siakam is injured early in the season, so we're going to see Barnes start for most of the season, at least talking that first month. Right, he's going to be the starter. I'm expecting that he's going to play with uh, Van Vliet, Trent Jr., OG, and then maybe Ken Birch at the five. That's my expectation for the projected starting lineup this season. But I do think that once Siakam gets back in the lineup, there is going to be a little bit of stepping on toes between these guys because I don't think you can play them together in a modern NBA offense. And so that's something that makes me think, and I've talked about this multiple times already, that Siakam is on the way out. We don't really know for sure whether or not he's going to be traded before the season starts. 
Well, that's just a TBD type thing that we're going to wait and see what happens. But overall, Scotty Barnes, great game. Honestly, if you haven't, I'd watch his highlights. He's got an infectious personality on top of having an amazing game. And like I said, massive, huge guy. I'd never really watched him play a full game. And wow, like just his size is significant. You can feel him on the court a lot of the time on the defensive end, especially on offense. It did feel like at times you didn't really see him. You know what I mean? Like he would be out there, but he would kind of disappear. He had that similar type to Ben Simmons, but when he has the ball in his hands, you can feel his presence for sure. Another guy who I'm excited to see play this season is Malachi Flynn, another young player, obviously in his second year with the Toronto Raptors after having a really good preseason last year. Didn't quite have a significant season overall. Obviously super young, wasn't given a ton of opportunity. Nick Nurse likes to really give these guys time to develop and really doesn't want to give someone everything right away, which makes a lot of sense to me. But for Malachi Flynn, he had a great end to his season and now momentum moving into this season. On top of that, Kyle Lowry being gone and Dragic coming in means more minutes to be shared for that bench. And as a result, we're going to see a lot more Malachi Flynn. We're going to see a lot more young guy mistakes, or so we think. Actually, I feel like today he showed a lot of poise. He had 23 points, 6 rebounds, only 1 assist. There was a really funny Instagram comment on my page that I'm going to show you guys right now. And this one made me laugh. It just says, Flynn paying homage to Fred VanVleet with 1 assist. Honestly, that's just hilarious. That's just great content. Thank you for putting that on my IG in the comments. And once again, if you don't follow my Instagram, why aren't you? You are you should be a big Raptors fan. Get out there. Follow the IG at Raptors underscore community. Got over 26,000 followers and counting on our way to 30K and on our way to 1,000 subs here too, but no more plug in that stuff. For Malachi Flynn, like I said, his poise has increased at the guard position already as such a young player. He already was coming into the league, the guy that... Actually did have a lot of poise considering his age, but I think that's one of the things that I noticed right away with him is that his handle looks clean, looks super tight. Guys aren't going to really steal the ball from him as much. And this year, I'm super excited to watch him play as a scorer. He showcased everything today. And he's going to be a key role player for the Raptors this season and a guy that I'm excited to watch play even more this year, especially because he's going to be getting an increased role with the team. And as a young player, he is super exciting to watch could end up being one of the big steals in that 2020 draft as he went late in that first round. But that's basically it for my summary of the game. I think these two guys were the ones that really showcased it. The next game is August 10th, I believe. So if you haven't already, tune in to watch Scotty Burns. Uh, the schedule is on our Instagram. Posted a couple days ago with a jersey swap of um, Scotty Burns on that page. So you just swipe through. You can look at the schedule. And just remember... Thank you for listening as usual. Uh, I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Peace out, everybody.